Apparently, my way of making up for no Easter videos was to do a whole video dedicated to egg recipes and to dress up as a husky hipster Easter bunny. <laughs> but hello my peeps, welcome back to the channel. Now, have you ever had the urge to just Google or YouTube search the word eggs and see what came up? Because I have, and besides the children's surprise egg videos with billions of views, still don't understand how or why that is possible. It's gotta be one of the weird conspiracies out there being true. But besides those, there are many, many very creative and unique and delicious looking chicken egg recipes that we're gonna be trying out today. I also went back through years worth of YouTube comments and Instagram DM suggestions to compile a list of the internet's most viral, most creative egg recipes out there. And we will be testing out Gordon Ramsay's very famous scrambled eggs, the TikTok egg envelope, the infamous Japanese omuraisu and the cloud eggs, as well as some eggs and cocottes, and the spiral egg omelette to round everything off. None of these are too labor intensive, so we should have a pretty fun and lighthearted day ahead of us, and let's get right into this one. Because this recipe probably has the best balance of deliciousness to difficulty and practicality, Gordon Ramsay scrambled eggs are going to be up first. You will need some olive oil and salt and pepper, sourdough bread and tomatoes on the vine, lots of eggs and butter, creme fraiche, medium-sized mushrooms, and fresh chives. Depending on how this experiment goes today and how much you guys all enjoy it, I feel like this could be a pretty fun video series. It kind of has the same energy as the series that Andrew is running on the channel How to Eat, where you take one ingredient or one food focal point and see how many new variations out there you can come across. And there's nobody better to start us off with this series than the trusty old Gordon Ramsay and his very unique take on the classic scrambled egg. If you've never seen this method, it's basically just rotating the eggs on and off the heat to make sure they don't overcook and firm up too fast. He says to pretend that they are a risotto and kind of never stop stirring to not let that bottom layer burn. And if done properly, especially with the right amounts of the butter and the creme fraiche, you should end up with something super creamy, very rich, and kind of perfectly pourable over any kind of toast or bread that you have. And by the way, Gordon, don't think we all didn't catch that at the end of the video, you dirty hamster. So if you want to be a good boy, run upstairs now and give it to her in bed, the breakfast. <laughs> I felt obligated to include the tomatoes because there's not a whole lot going on in this dish, but we will address that in a minute. As for the rest of this, I was extremely pleased. The sourdough toasted beautifully, the mushrooms look perfectly cooked, I am salivating over here. So let's give egg recipe number one a shot. This looks incredible, so friggin' like aesthetic and pretty outside of one third of it. Now, even I have to admit that this looks super pretty. The colors are really pleasing to look at. If you've never tried this preparation for scrambled eggs, I highly recommend it. It does seem super annoying and that's because it is, uh, but if you do it right, you get the smoothest, velvetiest, almost like cottage cheese texture, which sounds gross, but I promise you it is not. That's unfortunate. How about some mushrooms? Also so good, as Rie says, I have never once met a mushroom I did not like. And I guess I gotta include a little piece of this nastiness on the bread. Um, if you're new here, I strongly dislike tomatoes, at least in their whole form. I love tomato products, some sauces, ketchup. But when they're warm and like gloopy and full of seeds, I just strongly dislike them. Just to prove to all you that it's actually in the bite I'm taking. Yeah, as usual, uh, I'm sorry if you love them, but they're just disgusting to me. The rest of this, absolutely delicious. I highly recommend you give them a shot. Okay, next on our excellent menu, we've got the egg envelope from Sunny Cuisine on TikTok. You will need an egg. No seasonings, no fats, that is apparently it. Now I first wanted to try this straight up, like in the video, but I couldn't help myself. I did add a little bit of oil just to help this really old nonstick pan along. There's a couple of spots at the bottom where the coating isn't what it once was. And for just 
cracking open an egg and trying the technique, this didn't come out too bad. I was happy with it overall. The egg white was a little bit uneven in thickness, so to try to resolve that, in my next attempt, I was gonna use a strainer, at which point we had our first of many accidental yolk breaks of the day. I figured the strainer would be perfect because if you've ever cracked an egg, you would know that half of the white is like water and the other half is like super thick. So it should theoretically even out the viscosity of this entire thing. Unfortunately, no matter how hard you try, you cannot get that thick portion of the egg white fully through. It just continues to run away from the spoon. And as a result, we didn't have enough egg white to cover the bottom of this. I also think this pan might be holding us back a little bit. It's definitely not user error or anything like that. So I grabbed a new nonstick pan. This time I'm just gonna whisk the egg white a bit to try to get it homogenous. Also the strainer was annoying and is now dirty in the sink, so I didn't wanna wash it. And let's just say, who knew that the egg envelope could be this challenging? Are you kidding? What the f is going on here? Sticking to the pan anyway. <gasps> what? Why is every single yolk breaking? What the f Are you kidding me? I don't know what's going on today. I'm barely touching the damn yolks and they're just breaking. I thought it was the organic brown eggs that I bought, so I tried some of our white factory farmed eggs that we already had in the fridge. Those fared slightly better, and honestly, I'm just happy to have gotten this one. Seven years of cooking different foods for a living, and the egg envelope has me this tilted. Oh my god. It's a good thing I bought a lot of eggs today, but I thought the bulk of them would be used for the omuraisu. I'm a little concerned. Of all things to struggle with, that mightily. It's a damn egg yolk folded in its white. I don't understand. Mmm. I do really love eggs, don't get me wrong. It's one of the reasons I was excited for this video in the first place. Um, but could this use some seasoning, some hot sauce, anything? Yeah. I'm just trying to think, like, for what application would you choose this egg method over something else? Maybe in like a burger or sandwich or on top of a plate of ramen, but again, I don't know why you choose this over just a fried or boiled egg. I guess it's a cool idea, it tastes good because it's an egg, but on the scale of like creativity to practicality, it's somewhere in the middle. Third on today's agenda is the omuraisu. This one has been an internet legend forever. I've watched Andrew remake it 50 times. I have tried to make it in the past and failed many times miserably. But today I have all the confidence in the world. So I grabbed some chicken breasts and salt and pepper, vegetable oil and shimeji mushrooms, fresh parsley and demi-glaze, some day old white rice and eggs, an onion and some butter. As I mentioned, let's just get this out of the way right now. I absolutely botched this recipe the last time I tried, but that was like four years ago now and I was using super cheap pans. I think my skills have progressed a tiny bit since then, even though I just struggled beyond belief with an egg white crepe. But I'm gonna try to keep an optimistic outlook on this one. I prepped up all my ingredients, my chicken, the mushrooms, the parsley. The fried rice comes together super quickly, so you wanna make sure everything is prepped up and ready to be thrown in the pan. And then I just got my rice all cooked up and ready to go. I referenced the measurements Andrew uses in his video because he said he received the exact recipe that Chef Motokichi uses in Japan. Side note, I absolutely love how those two have seemingly become best friends through YouTube videos. It really just kind of shows the power and influence of the internet and food videos, really. But I tried to follow Andrew exactly by throwing in all my ingredients in the same order he did, finishing it off with, of course, the rice, the salt and pepper, and demi-glaze. Feel free to make your own demi-glaze if you got hours or days extra time. Knock yourself out with that if you choose, but I don't have that kind of time today, so I found some pre-made stuff online. You can find them in little plastic pouches that are concentrated, and you just have to mix them with some water to dilute it a little bit. And now on to the omelets. Of course, through trying to replicate this myself in the past, but mostly from years of thinking about those attempts and watching everybody else's videos, I have learned that really the most important things here is the pan that you're using. 
It has to be a really good quality non-stick pan with an edge that kind of lends itself well to making that ovular omelet shape. And then just practice. You gotta dial in your heat level, the amount of time you wanna mix those curds before trying to let it set into its shape. It can be so fickle, one minor thing off can ruin the entire thing, but and my first attempt was not terrible. The outside was kind of ugly, but when I cracked it open, the inside looked absolutely perfect. I was super happy with the size of the curds and the doneness that was happening in there, so I whipped up another batch of eggs and tried a second attempt. I couldn't tell you how long to cook this or what level of heat you want to set your oven to. You're gonna have to figure that out on your own, unfortunately. It's really just a game of trial and error. For the second attempt, I added an extra egg, I lowered the heat a touch, and honestly... Something inside me is telling me that I'm not gonna get anything better than this, so I'm just gonna ride with it. One side fell open pretty well. The other one needed a little bit of help, but beggars can't be choosers, especially with this recipe, so let's give it a taste. Is this the prettiest omuraisu you've ever seen on the internet? Absolutely not. Is it the best one I've ever made and probably will ever make? Yeah. The egg and the rice are very good, super tasty. It has that velvety, like creamy curd-like texture in the middle. I don't really like this demi-glaze though, uh, the ones that came in the package. You are supposed to dilute them, and I did that with a few tablespoons of water, but this is not great. Obviously, that'll just depend on the brand that you use. If you make it homemade, I'm sure it'll be even better. But overall, I'm happy with this. I can't lie to you guys. If I tried it a few hundred more times, I'm sure it'll get better. Do I think that would be a good allocation of my time? No, but I highly encourage you try it at least once or twice. Find yourself a good nonstick pan. And even if it doesn't perfectly open and unfurl on top of the rice, like, I'm sure it'll taste great and it'll be a fun experience for you. How could we cover all the most viral hack versions of an ingredient and not try a BuzzFeed recipe? So tasties, cloud eggs, you are up next. You will need some eggs and salt and pepper. Immediately, I was getting flashbacks of the TikTok cloud bread that I made a while ago, but at least there were some more things in it. This one is literally just whipped egg whites to firm peaks sprinkled with salt and pepper, and then baked for eight minutes. You plop the yolks down in the middle halfway through, and that's pretty much it. This tasty video with like 10 different egg recipes was actually one of the main reasons I had the idea for this video too. And it got uploaded all the way back in 2018, so let's just say I've been sitting on this one for a long time. But our cloud eggs have been twice baked, I got a little bit of color around the edges. If I had to guess, you were probably supposed to try to avoid that, so these look like purely white clouds. But your guess is as good as mine, really, so let's give this one a shot. First of all, this thing has so many things against it before you even try to eat it. Listen to the sound it makes when you're trying to cut through it. It just sounds like you're cutting through styrofoam. Also, the undercooked like egg bits that get attached to the yolk and the uh, whites that were like stuck to the yolk that didn't cook, uh, not the most appetizing thing in the world. And like the mouthfeel of it, it's just so bizarre. They remind me of the biodegradable packing peanuts where you can um, like dissolve them in water. It's essentially what happens in your mouth, like gone. It doesn't taste that good. I also just don't get it. If one of you out there do, I guess let me know in the comments, but um, skip this one. Continuing on with our egg journey, we've got some eggs and cocotte, also known as French baked eggs. I compiled some heavy cream and salt and pepper, crusty bread and boursin cheese, a couple of eggs, butter, and fresh chives. While I have already tested this recipe in one of the TikTok test videos, if you couldn't tell already by how I'm gushing over it, I feel like it fits perfectly because, like all the other recipes, it really highlights the eggs. It's a unique preparation, which a lot of you may not have seen before. 
And it doesn't hurt that it is freaking delicious. I have dreamt of this recipe ever since I made it. I started by toasting up some of my ciabatta bread. Feel free to use whatever kind of crusty country loaf or sourdough you have. I would suggest a bread with some structural integrity, not something that is flimsy as a David Dobrik apology. You want something that is sturdy and able to stand up to dipping into your final product. As for the eggs, they get cracked down into a buttered ramekin, along with some of the crumbled borsan cheese and heavy cream, covered with a lid and then baked at 350 degrees for anywhere from 12 to 18 minutes, depending on how runny you like your yolks. I don't know what it is exactly about this recipe, but it belongs in the TikTok Hall of Fame. It's not like a bunch of the other viral TikToks that just get views because they're outrageous or outlandish ideas. Like, this is genuinely so good. It gets placed in a water bath to ensure it cooks gently, and then it just gets finished with some salt, pepper, and fresh chives. The combined smell of this plate with the buttery bread and the herbs is bringing me right back, so I need to eat this right now. I'm kinda glad I saved this one towards the end because it did not matter how many eggs I ate today, I would have been looking forward to this and enjoy it just as much. Perfectly buttery, crispy bread. Oh yes. This is so damn good, guys. It's so rich and salty and buttery. You've got like firm chunks of yolk and white and like more liquid parts. Mmm. It's elevated even more so by the flavorings of the borsan cheese, the garlic and the herbs. I don't know that I want to have it for breakfast and have like garlic and chive breath, but any other time of the day, any day of the week, sign me up. I think this might be the best one of the day. Our last experiment of the day is the famous tornado omelet, spiral omelet, whatever you want to call it. Either way, it looks very cool, and to make it, you will need some fried rice and some eggs. Obviously, if you didn't already have rice, you would have to make this, but this is leftover from the omuraisu, so I figured why not use it. Why do I have a bad feeling that this is gonna be one of those recipes that looks so incredibly simple and easy, but because it has such little ingredients, it's gonna be so damn hard. But let's just dive into it and see how we fare. I scrambled up three eggs, dumped them down into my nonstick pan, and tried to give them a spiral. Immediately, no, this did not work at all, but I kind of forgot how shitty this pan was for one of the other recipes, so I swapped it out. Scrambled up three more eggs, added some oil, and... No. I'm literally almost 30 eggs into this video already. I'm into the reserves, which are my parents that they will be using for breakfast tomorrow. So I really gotta make this work like right now. So I did some more research. I was thinking maybe it was the pans I was using, maybe the chopsticks, or it's just because I'm a big old moron and you're supposed to start from the outside of the pan. It is late, I am exhausted. <laughs> I promise that's the last one. I'm done. But it's an honest mistake to overlook that. I also flipped the chopsticks upside down because I think the wider ends of these might help our case. I went down to two eggs to see if that would make a difference, but mainly just to save our reserve of eggs. And over the next three tries, maybe I got moderately better, but not much. I'm gonna have to look up how long scrambled eggs last in the fridge because the amount I have might last my family for a couple weeks. But God damn it, this one is gonna haunt me for a long time. I have no other choice but to just plate this up and give it a try, but once again, I cannot express how triggered I am over some eggs. Now I am sick of eggs. Why is it the easiest looking things is the most hard? I don't get it. It literally just looks like I made a flat egg pancake and then just draped it over some rice. This is annoying. I also only just realized now that this is potentially the most pointless tasting exercise maybe we've ever done. Eggs and rice. God, this is really annoying. I feel like I did get super close. I feel like if I had two more eggs, at least it would have been an even better version of this. I guess I should just be happy that I even got this at all um, on my last two. If you guys try this and get a better result than me, please send it to me on Instagram because I would love to see it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this egg journey along with me. If you did, leave a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. Leave me what food item or ingredient you think I should investigate fully and try eight different variations of. But other than that, have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you right back here next time. Peace!
up in my finger, yeah, yeah. Chefing in that kitchen, flexing how we live in, yeah. yeah. I'm cooking up that fire out in David's kitchen. They were calling me a liar, nah, they be wishing that they could have seen the fire out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we cooking up that rah rah, yeah, yeah. Now we eating all the fries out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we living super size, ah, yeah.